we now want to think about the role of technology in producing economic growth. Now, technology has changed throughout history. We conquered fire, invented the wheel, the printing press. Thomas Edison invented the light bulb. We developed the steam engine, the internal combustion engine, the internet. And now we're seeing the power of artificial intelligence. But when we say that technology is increasing, we don't just mean the state of knowledge is increasing. We could also be referring to the human capital or the human skills that are necessary to operate that technology. As human skills and human capital increases, the population becomes more educated. We also include that in our definition of increasing technology. So wherever the increase in technology comes from, let's think about what it would do in the context of our model. Which of the curves or lines in our model would change? Well, the depreciation investment line certainly wouldn't change. For any level of capital, it'll still take the same amount of investment to just keep that capital at a constant level. But the curve that will change immediately is the GDP curve. If we increase technology, we're no longer on this original GDP curve that held technology fixed. An increase in technology will cause a rotation up in that curve. So we're going to see an upward rotation to a new curve that looks something like this. So we started at an initial curve, and we now have a new curve. But is that all that's going to happen? If all that happened was that this curve rotates up, we would have a fixed level of capital, and we would see an increase in GDP. But remember how we got that investment curve in the first place. We assume that the investment share of GDP is constant at 20%. Suppose it remains constant at 20%, but now GDP is higher. If GDP goes up, then investment, if it's constant as a share of GDP, is going to rise. So this investment curve is also going to rotate up. So we're going to rotate that curve up. It's still going to be 20% of GDP, but it's going to be higher. We started with this, and now we're here. So the upward rotation of the investment curve will result in a new steady state level of capital. If we stayed at the original level of capital, we would be investing more than what's necessary to keep capital constant. But that means that capital is going to increase. And it's going to keep increasing until we get to that new intersection. So at that new level of capital, we're going to read off what GDP will be when we get to the new GDP curve that's relevant for the new level of technology. So we're going to see an even bigger increase in GDP. We'll end up at this level of GDP. Now, we could decompose that increase in GDP into two components. We could say which portion of it is due to the increase in capital. If all that happened was an increase in capital, but we remained on the original GDP curve, we would see an increase in GDP of this amount. So that's just due to an increase in capital. But in addition, the technology changed the GDP curve. And so we see this additional increase that's happening just from that change in technology. So we can decompose the increase in GDP into two components. This component, which tells us the increase in GDP from the increase in technology at this new level of capital. But we also have this increase in GDP that's due to just the increase in capital that resulted from an upward rotation of the investment curve. So economists have gotten increasingly good at decomposing how much of the increase in GDP, how much of economic growth from an increase in technology is due to the technology itself and how much is due to the increase in the capital stock that happens because of that investment curve rotating up. Now, if instead of an increase in technology, 
we had an increase in the labor hours through immigration or increased fertility, we would actually see exactly the same picture. We would see an upward rotation of the GDP curve, and that would give rise to an upward rotation of the investment curve. So we'd get exactly the same picture. But there are two caveats. There's a limit to how much population can grow. So if all we do is rely on population growth to increase GDP to cause economic growth, we're going to hit a limit. In addition, what we really care about is GDP per capita. And if population increases, we have to divide by a larger population to get GDP per capita. But because an increase in the population doesn't just rotate the GDP curve up, but also rotates the investment curve up, we will see an increase in GDP per capita, but just seeing increases in population. We also talked about increasing natural resources, and that too would change the picture in exactly the same way. We would get a rotation upward of the GDP curve, and that would cause an upward rotation of the investment curve. But again, the problem is there's a limit to how many natural resources we can actually find by just digging for more of them. And so if all we relied on was more natural resources to produce economic growth, we would hit a ceiling. So that's why we look towards technology as a source of ongoing economic growth. Technology, as long as it can keep changing, it can keep improving, either through increased knowledge or increased human skills, we can see ongoing and continuing economic growth. Now, before we get together in class, I'd like you to think about one more thing. We all know that we're facing an increasing problem of climate change. And climate change may have an impact on economic growth. So what I'd like you to think about is how might climate change affect what we see in these pictures? What might be affected? What might be changed and how might that change our thinking about the long run level of GDP and its growth? Might some countries benefit from climate change and actually be able to grow faster? and other countries be hurt by climate change and stagnate as a result of climate change. So give that some thought and we'll talk about it more in class.